Well, this week we're going to start with the uh, Jesus movement, uh, something that's current um, within memory without going into the 50s and 40s and such, but while well, touching back into those areas. And um, the Jesus movement is part of the charismatic renewal that came and, and touched uh, the United States. Part of that was, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, in the 60s, people started getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And it was a... It was a um, sovereign act of God where God was invading uh, not just the Pentecostal circles but God was moving out of that into mainline denominational streams that was to the horror of many people uh, especially leaders something they couldn't contain it was like a fire that was uncontainable and many of them got filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and some of those which were Catholics who um, would visit places and and uh, these are things that I remember that would they would go to Melody Land for example in California and the power of God would would come on them and they would go they used to turn back then slain in the spirit and hit the floor rise up speaking in tongues and um, into the 70s you got a, a, a culture a, a, a subcultures in the hippie movement were being reached by uh, Jesus Christ and it was a time, and I remember I was, you know, caught up in it. Uh, actually, I ran from it because it was sweeping through our school. And people were getting saved, and they were speaking in tongues, and I thought it was just a lot of insanity. I wasn't in the right frame of mind. Um, I'd already gone through so many issues in the church. Uh, parents used to take us to church and just drop us off. And I had a, <clears throat> a sense of God. But he basically, in my mind, he left us there, and we we find our way. It was a religious sense of, of 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 humanistic philosophies that you pick up, you know, where he's there, but he just left us alone. And all I saw was these guys were nuts, and you know, the Jesus freaks were everywhere at the time, and so they couldn't let you party in in peace. <laughs> and so we, as I got older, though. I ended up going to a uh, uh, service and I saw healings actually taking place around me and God called my heart again and went forward and when I went into the line to stand to receive Jesus the power of God hit me and I was on the ground next thing you know I'm waking up I was feeling euphoric they you know take you in the back give you a golf pencil fill out this information I don't even remember that the following week Pam went and it started us in the latter end of the Jesus movement where you can just talk to anybody about Jesus and they receive him. They would get filled with the Holy Spirit there on the streets. You just say, you want the Holy Ghost? Yes. Boom. No, no coaxing to speak in tongues. It would just happen. And that reading historically took place in, in, in Asbury, Kentucky, where they, in, a, in a school where over a thousand people were just overcome by the Holy Spirit. And they canceled all the lectures, they canceled classes, and people literally flocked over there and everyone who come near would get filled with the Holy Spirit, get saved and there was a deep sense of repentance where they would repent of their sins because there was something in the 60s that took place where there was uh, people were so aware of their, their sinfulness that was a little bit different in the 70s that in the 70s there was a lot of community there was a uh, there was a focus on s s Bible based spirit filled uh, community focus where people were filled with the Holy Spirit and it wasn't an us against them, it was come out and experience this. So they weren't really standing against denominational circles. They were just experiencing the gifts of the Spirit. People were being healed. People were, were and like anything, I guess people can get weird or strange with it, you know. And, and, and in the midst of that, the, com the competition. Uh, within the mainline denominations, there was not that type of... Um, there wasn't a, 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 you know, God always takes care of himself. Uh, Pam and I went to a, a meeting one time. They were invited. And it, again, in the sense of community and, and communal meetings where everybody invites everybody, we came into this place. You had to take off your shoes, which was the first thing. It was like, everybody go in barefooted. So we took off our shoes and we went in. It's like kind of stuff was, but we went in and everybody sitting down, kneeling, crossing their legs, waiting for the speaker to come in. But next thing you know, they unveil a little squirrel and everybody starts going into chant. And we started talking, we found the leader and we asked him, they said, oh yeah, this is Buddhism. And we kind of backed out and still reach people with the real gospel later on. But what happens is that 
many people try to put walls around what God is doing. But God can take care of himself because if, remembering back, there were so many conferences on the Holy Spirit to try to define what he's doing, which were good. And because people needed education, because in, in, in the early days of Pentecost, you had people right out of the brush arbor coming and teaching the Bible and they had no clues what they were knowing. They just knew that God was showing up, His Spirit was there, people were getting healed. You know, they, they, God was visiting every culture and subculture. And so you had people like David Wilkerson who were pulled out of the mainstream, went to go reach gang members. And, and, and so there began another portion of the church where people who were viewed as unreachable were being reached now. And so uh, the, we pulled several people out of that, that little Buddhist communal place and they received Jesus and, and got filled with the Holy Ghost. And what made the difference, it wasn't just a philosophy, but it was a philosophy with proof. The power of God was a manifestation and it matched what the Word said. And so when, the talk, when we start speaking about how that God was confirming His Word with signs following, it's what He does. He confirms His Word with signs following. And so the basis of all of the things we're going to be talking about in these little 10 minute snippets here, we're going to be addressing and visiting some of the historic events of the Charismatic Renewal, uh, dipping into some of the, the backgrounds of what happened in history that brought us up to this point. But God basically, my opinion is that He's been catching up what was intended in the, in, 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 in the young church to grow out of those very things that took us into the dark ages are the things that God is now restoring to the church. And one of those things that happens at every revival as I've been studying the revivals and the moves of God is that we always try to box God in to say this is the definition of who God is. These are the, these are the definitions of what He's attempting to do. And God is always jumping out of the box. And when He jumps out of the box, He leaves dead religion. And many people are still dancing around old revival fires that have no life because they're only fueled by the doctrines of man and their traditions. And God is always trying to do something different among the people with the same gospel. So it's always the same gospel, different manifestations, diversities of, of operations. And I'm finding out that God moves through the expression of man. And many people disagree because it's not their expression. And so this is what we're going to talk about and we're going to move into those things so that we can begin to see the expression and identify God. Look at the expression, identify God. And then see where they shut down the expression and God also left with shutting down the expression. And so you have people like Catherine Coleman. Uh, ministry was very well, it was reluctantly accepted by the church even in the form of a woman because you couldn't deny the power. And so this is where we're coming into I believe in this next season is that we're going to come into a place where we have knowledge of the Word and we have knowledge of doctrinal issues but the Holy Spirit is now free to move within that context because there's people that are really starting to believe the message of freedom and grace in which that God takes imperfect man and fills you with a perfect spirit fueled by a perfect Word that allows God to move into the expressions that we that are Julian, that are David, that are anybody else. And so we no longer say, can define God by defining a, an Oral Roberts. We can define him through the Bill Johnsons and, and, and even the John Crowders and, and whether they're your cup of tea or not, God has already branded them and God is being manifest through their expression. And so <clears throat> in doing this, I believe that we're going to be free to experience God at a whole different level because God is one to be experienced. God is one to be encountered. It's not just a cerebral knowledge of what He has said and be satisfied with education, but God wants to impart Himself into us and then express Himself through us to reach a dying world.